Yeah, I don't not digging back in history because um, it's all past, and I'm more interested in looking what's in the future. And we were talking about digital transformation at this time, and I said digital transformation is bullshit. Um, I still believe it's bullshit. It's good that you're able to transform, but like you don't need to transform within two years, and then you realize you have to transform again. So it's more a holistic approach, and you should look into the future. And um, when Daniel asked me if I would come on stage for and talk about uh, my topics for 10 minutes, I thought which topics I would like to bring on which help you to think about your future. And um, the topic which drives me most currently is data. Uh, big data, smart data, all those topics is nice, but data is like water now. Everyone needs data to develop their business. We have seen Swarovski building some data to print some uh, prototypes, data, data, data everywhere. Um, that brings a couple of core challenges. The first one is data quality. So are you aware of what are the sources? Are you using all the sources? Are all the data you use, are those information authentic? Are they real? Um, can you own this data or are you allowed to use this data? And what are the ethics behind data? And the ethics topic is the one which will cause the most uh, headache for all of us within the next couple of years because we are not aware of what's happening with data currently. And we all believe the good will survive, but also the bad is not sleeping anymore in regards of data. And I go for hacker conferences for the last 12 years, and what I see what they do with data and data breaches, it's unbelievable. And the ethics topic is also the only topic currently driving the fear which stops us from developing artificial intelligence because we are not willing to hand over decisions to machines. And that is um, because we don't know what's going to happen and we don't know on what data those machines make their decisions. And um, if you think about data, there's one important rule. Your data should be the three th C rule, complete, consistent, correct. Correct data is super hard to get. Correct means 100%. So I'm super happy if I get exact data, when I get better and better and closer to uh, correct data. Um, the reason for that is if you have bad data, you have bad decisions. Shit in, shit out. So if you look at data and at clients on our side, we see 80% of most of the ter times uh, data is uh, bullshit. We just throw it away, start Greenfield and say, okay, what do we need on data to build a decision base for um, data-driven marketing, data-driven decisions, machine learning, whatever. If you don't have your data in place and you have someone who's really taking care of it and making sure that all of those C's are in place, you will have a hard time. Or someone will overtake you because they're feeding in wrong data, you make wrong decisions, or the machine make wrong decisions, and it's going to be hard. And if we talk about data, and especially about the sources, uh, we see IoT is coming in strongly. A lot of data sources are little devices connected to each other. Um, and this leads us into the world of hyperconnection. And I spend a lot of time in China, and I'm fascinated about, of course, Baidu, Tencent, and Ali. But those are not for me the big players in the future. There's one stakeholder um, which most people are not aware of. It's a company founded about eight years ago, and it's called Xiaomi. Does anyone know Xiaomi? Uh, pretty much. That's cool. Xiaomi currently has 1,800 products in place. Um, the most of them are below $50. They're all connected with each other. I have a home with 178 IoT devices connected to each other from my Upsa toilet seat with heating and washing up to my fridge, which can order milk when I'm not home and the milk is gone. Um, my plants are watering with Xiaomi technology themselves and nutrition themselves. All of that is connected. And this gives us a few what hyperconnection will look like in the future. And the society is driven by convenience. So if this IoT devices bring a lot of convenience to us, we will let them in our home. What I won't do is have any kind of electric door or window systems because um, what I see what my kids do currently with technology and hacking, um, I don't want to know what other people do. So uh, I keep prefer a real key and uh, still a handle to open a window um, because this is covering my privacy. 
Um, but Xiaomi is a phenomenon. And if you see the Chinese government regulating data, Xiaomi is their entry point. Everyone uses Xiaomi routers or IoT devices, phones, uh, data sticks, and all of that. Uh, so they are the real stakeholder of the data. They sit on the biggest data pod possible in China because they know what websites are opened, what uh, you're connecting with, who you're calling with, what information on your Xiaomi phone, you have all the apps. All of that is through one company. Of course, Baidu is big, as Baidu is like a search engine, or Tencent or Ali as like Amazon. Um, but Xiaomi is going to be amazingly big. So they go for IPO next year. So if you want to invest into stocks, I believe in Xiaomi, just on that point. And the other part um, about hyperconnection is IOTA. IOTA is not this developed at this stage uh, and present, but I think in the future um, it's worth having a look at that uh, as well as a cryptocurrency. But at the end, it's all about the responsibility we have taking care of the data, uh, handling the data. And we have the GDPR new law, which is for me quite a big joke, to be honest. Um, because if we talk about data protection, they th regulate your personal data. It's connected to your name and your person. But in our world and technology, it doesn't matter what, what's your name. It's just what's your behavior? What are you doing on what touch point? What is your footprint? So I don't care how, what's your name. You're an ID. Any hash graph I can use and I can connect anytime again. So um, for me, the current situation is not um, any future wise. So I'm curious how this will end up in the next couple of years and how the European Union is handling that. Um, but I don't need personal data anymore because I can build s similar twins. Uh, and data re replicas and all of that without knowing your name and still can address every kind of information to you um, personally. The last topic for me, and this is probably the second biggest um, and it's very close to data, is security. We cannot protect our data and we can try and we should try everything to protect it, but we won't be able to. There are so many breaches out there, so many data you can access. Um, every one of us can download a password file in the internet. You just have to search for it. There are 10,000 passwords in. With these passwords and this hash graphs, MD5 graphs, uh, you can probably enter 89% of all websites. It's just a long time to have to test against certain usernames, but like you have, there's a pretty common file uh, of passwords. And you can narrow it down. There's even a configurator that you get a data file at the end where maybe it's just 800 passwords you have to go through. So protect your own property is challenging and in the future is going to be more and more because data gets more and more valuable and people will uh, want this data. And because this tech world gets more complex, way more complex, um, simplicity is key. If you're working in a company, you have to make sure that people are able to handle whatever is coming up to it, and you have to simplify it uh, and not make it more complicated. So for me, data protection, like security and simplicity are three topics I'm looking at at this stage. I'm very curious about the ethics behind it. And um, yesterday I was talking in front of eight people, uh, very special talk, and I made them think about the future because they are building one of the biggest connected uh, infrastructures. Um, they are uh, association um, for light bulbs or lightning and they have all those light uh, production. Uh, so they connect all the light bulbs to have a mesh of information. But they were not really thinking about data protection and so I came up with a couple of stories and examples how you can hack those light bulbs, what you can do with it and what you can learn from that. And um, it got a bit quiet at the end. Um, but after that, we had a nice dinner and hot discussions. And they asked me with all this information, with all the complexity, how I can sleep at night, because this gives me to think. And I said, um, it's pretty simple. I stay curious. I stay fit about my knowledge. And um, there's one story about the two campers in the forest. When the bear comes and the one guy gets his jogging shoes on, the other guy says, hey, what are you doing? He says, yeah, I just have to be faster than you. So... That's my, my personal advice. So stay hungry, stay focused uh, and curious, learn more and be fast as the others. Uh, that gives you the advantage in the future to avoid the bear. Thank you. 
so I'm going to join you. And I, I brought water. some water for you. Water, later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and maybe uh, this is a good, uh, good uh, moment to explain to you that you are always free to ask any questions. So, um, we we want this uh, event as as it, to have it as interactive as possible. So, as soon as you have any questions, please just raise your hand, and you are very free to to ask your question. And um, because I did that uh, during our master classes last year as well, I have a task for every single one of you. Um, I want to hear one question at least from every one of you. So I will I will have a list and <laughs> I'll check that. <laughs> My question was just, wasn't the topic uh, learnings from transformation without an end? And now we're talking about data, so that is my question. How okay. come? Yeah, transformation is not ending and it's changing a lot. So we were looking at digitalization and what digital is going to do with us and our society and our economy and our corporates. Um, now, we have a lot of companies and clients which say we are not even using the term digitization anymore because it's natural. So the question is what are the new transformation talks? And the new transformation talks are about data, what I do with it, what is the ethics behind artificial intelligence, what are the new technologies driving this transformation? Money had just a frage. Nee. <laughs> okay. Not um, all at the same time, please. <laughs> Um, you talked a lot about uh, we have to be faster than the others. No, no Germany is not the fastest uh, country, and especially German economy is like uh, we are always like when it comes to digitalization, we are always like one one step behind. Um, what do you think? And and we have a lot of regulations coming on top of that that also slow down the speed. So. What do you think? What what would we have to do to to keep on track and to to be ahead? Um, first, we, Germany is not this far behind, and in, in some section, especially because we're engineers, we're more profound, probably as we need to be uh, as about certain topics. Um, we're far behind of agility, uh, um, adapting topics, um, and also. We're kind of in a, in, in a cocoon, in a bubble, because we're protected. We have a very safe, good working economy. Uh, everyone is in jobs, uh, so there's no need for that. Um, but if you see China, for example, or other Indonesia, uh, a, a lot of Asian countries um, are de developing so fast, and they bring so much power into this world economy, um, we really have to be aware of that. And I have one example which shows where we stay at the current stage. Um, if you take the Allianz Arena, you want to fill it up with water by exponential growth. This means every second you have one drop, two drops, four drops, eight drops. How long do you think it takes to fill up the arena? Many years. 49 minutes. Exponential growth. After 45 minutes, you still have dry feet and you sit in the first row. That means in the last four minutes, because of exponential growth, the arena is filling up so fast. So we see the development in the world. We still feel, hey, we still have dry feet, but we don't get what's happening out there. And especially if you look at China and how fast they can adapt regulations. Uh, if they see the problem of... Um, the economy or uh, environment, for example, they just change laws within like a couple of weeks. And we're not, we're coming up with a GDPR solution, which is like outaged already when we get it. So the regulations is, you can follow them. I think you have to be more aware of risk management in the future. And people in Germany are risk, um, they don't like the risk and they have to take more risk to get somewhere. Um, because we're too slow in that part, yes. In the development, we're cool. So we have a lot of good technologies out there. But taking the risk to grow and to enter some stages and work together and bring some crowd intelligence into that, that's for me a future. 
So you talked about a lot of connected devices and more and more connected devices, which are also, uh, in the end, you have to take care of uh, securing them, them from hackers and so on. So um, many times on, from my point of view, we are, sometimes we are overprotecting, but sometimes we are also like, yeah, let's just try it out and, and see what happens because a lot of people don't understand the risks behind it. Um, but do you think, are we going to see a lot more hacking attacks in, in, in the upcoming years? How, how can sure. companies be, be aware of that? We already have a lot of more hacks happening. There is a group of hackers called Script Kitties. They're just bored. Because TV is no quality, nothing would they like. They have seen all of it on YouTube. Like, I'm amazed when my, I ask my 14-year-old, have you seen the video? And he says, you're so 80s. And I say, okay, just saw that yesterday. So it's like they know everything. So they get bored. Of course, they can go out and do sports, but they won't do it for every day. So they look for what they can do. And this is like their adrenal and adrenaline comes from hacking things or testing things and um, exploring things. And it's in the digital world. For them, it's natural. So this generation will come in and will challenge us. Um, and if you see DEF CON Kids, which is a hacker conference in the US, and there is about 2,500 kids on participating, oh, they own, most of them will be good, but some will be on the evil side. And um, as data gets more and more valuable, um, there's money in, and money is attractive. So you can combine that. Yeah, and uh, when we have a look at uh, the elections in the US, we also have an ethical uh, responsibility to protect our society from manipulation in the end. So. Yeah, but personally, I think the manipulation is already taking place. And it's one part of um, politics to make sure that when the developments in regards of robotics automation kick in and we lose more jobs than we can create, which I'm so absolutely sure about, um, that they have a control of the society. Uh, and, and this is already happening. It's not through TV anymore. It's more through the digital world. Um, so, to if you get used to it and penetration happens, you think it's normal. Uh, so, handing in data, we, we still are critical about data here in Germany, but we are an island in that way, because if you go to UK or if you go to um, Italy, they don't really care about this as much as we do. And that leads us into um, a special position, but the pressure from the world economy is kicking into us as well. Do we have any more questions, maybe? Because I'm always asking a lot, and Johannes. Hi, it's Simon. Thanks for your talk. Um, I really like the three Cs you mentioned um, related to data. And then I think about our company data. <laughs> we have on our several servers and so ever. Um, that would mean that we would never start with the analytics because the data are never clean and are never consistent. And how um, would you recommend to overcome this, um, the starting point of having not clean data, but we really want to learn something out of it? Uh, you can learn from the data you have because you can make thesis, but you should start with a clean data set and have a small project, not start with big data. Everyone talks about big data and thinks about if we have big data, there will be some balance of quality at the end. But the predictions you make out of this data, or you're building on, you cannot prove if it's right or not. So, but if you have, if you're sure about a small data set where you just have a, maybe a table of three different fields and maybe 100 or 500 data topics, then you can you know what's coming out, and you can use that to optimize and benchmark the data you have. But you have to build your own benchmarking set and scoring model uh, to score current or existing data. Uh, to come up and say, okay, what's the data quality? Uh, of course, data won't be correct. 100% is like difficult because it's changing anyway so often and so much of influence is coming in. But you have to m at least make sure that the data you're building on has a certain standard of quality. So, yeah. 
Good morning. Good morning. Um, <laughs> you have mentioned the concept of smart home raised in China. And if we want to make a general guess, how long would it take to like this trend hit Europe, you think? Um, it's already hitting because what you see, if you see media markets and all those uh, retail places, what they offer um, with routers and smartwatches and uh, it's not as fast as we thought, but like if Xiaomi is coming in and they already started coming in, they get now all the CE improvement, then you get uh, the devices for a price like which is like, you don't think about that. It's like 10 euro for a smart bulb or a Wi-Fi connection or whatever. So, and that brings convenience. And people like convenient, not getting up from the couch to turn on the light or off, uh, or having um, the promise that you save a lot of energy that will drive this development pretty fast. I say in the next two, three years, we see a massive growth. And there's a global expectation of about 70 um, billion devices connected uh, within the next two years. So, Hansi. Um, why do you have fears from this development? So, so far, if you share your data, um, I'm sharing everything in the internet and I never happened to, uh, to get some bad experience with it that someone sent me um, something bad or that I got insulted or something like this. So, so far, everything always made it better. Um, new connections on LinkedIn, Facebook and so on. You meet new people. There are new opportunities always coming up. Why do you, in the end, uh, have fear that even a company like Xiaomi could use this in the worst thing? So, of course, they wouldn't make money out of it, but if I don't want the product, I say, Xiaomi, I don't need this new thing or I don't need this and that. I, I think further, it's not about worrying that Xiaomi is using my data. Um, but I think if you see the development of robotics and automation coming in, that governments has to do something with their society, they will use the data. And that... I don't want to be in their track record to be manipulated in the first place, or I would like to be aware of what's happening in there. It's just my personal feeling. So I don't see it in a small nucleus. I see it in a broader uh, view on that. And um, I'd like to be aware. I'm a control freak. So I, I'd like to be in control of what I do and, and where I'm heading my data in. I would like to know what's going to happen. And this is why I feed in fake data, um, buying like virtually some cat feed. Because I don't even have a cat, but like mixing my data in that it's not a full 100% picture to see what happens. Not because I want to fake it, but just want to see what happens. So I joined Facebook groups with about uh, cats or about uh, building a house and then see what happens around with the media scale or uh, communication around me. So that's more my curiosity driven. Yeah. Okay. Dwight. Hi, thank you very much for that, inspiring as always. Uh, one question that has been on my mind for a few years is um, the rising prevalence of CCTV cameras, uh, smartphones being pointed at me everywhere I go. In fact, I yeah, sometimes feel like a star because I'm like this, you know, just trying to block people taking pictures of my face. Um, so all this data is going uh, into some sort of cloud storage device. Um, combined with facial recognition, uh, all of a sudden I have a data set out in the open um, which I'm not aware of. Are you aware of any way that uh, this is being addressed at the moment to have an opt-out um, of that? No chance. Thank Zero. you. Zero. This is something in regards of what you asked, what is my worry about that? If you know what's now, able what you can do with the data. If everyone has heard about Ekman, Paul Ekman, no one. Okay, well, you should really Google this guy. Uh, he's a, a scientist, and he came up with um, technologies called microexpression recognition. Eight pe you have eight emotions which you cannot hide. No one can hide. Not even a monkey can hide. And uh, it takes about a quarter of a second to um, discover this or cup just show this micro expression and you know if someone likes something or is disgust or contempt about any kind of reaction and then you know if they like it or not and this is going to be used in marketing but also in governmental um, sections you don't need a lie protector in, uh, lying um, system anymore because you can see it from the camera so the pictures about me and my videos what happening in the world um, is boring me on one hand for sure too yeah but you, you cannot do anything about it anymore. 
And in Germany, we have a couple of cameras here in Munich, but if you go to the US, if you go to New York, like you cannot I, I even check in a toilet. I'm not sure if they have now. Meanwhile, uh, cams in the toilet is a bit strange. Okay, one one last question, maybe. No. Okay. So thank you, Simon. Thank you as well. <laughs>